Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode I want to do some more bees, I know, very bad, but I found we've actually got something that's really good from bees now. We've got that far. So let's start with what we've been doing with it, the two bees before. In fact I missed a few bits and recorded re-recorded some episodes, so I lost those clips, but I haven't. After all, I'll just splice them in now. So I'll see you in a few seconds when I finish that. Of course, that's first things first, we've got to look at these bees because it's getting cold as you can see. <laughs> very cold I think, so I've probably not got very much time to do this, so let's have a quick look at these. So we've been doing, if I can get through, no, wrong thing, I can't get it, it's too much snow in the way. <laughs> let's get out of this way. So we're trying to get these into common, to be common bees, aren't we? So let's have a look at this one. That's a pure meadows, brilliant, no progress whatsoever, that's a forest meadows, and that's a meadows forest. Fantastic. <laughs> so we'll put those two there. We're going to get a pure forest from the from the box and carry on and hopefully next time we get a bit more luck. As you can see, this crossbreeding is actually not so straightforward. I was thinking it was probably easier than it is being at the moment, but it's actually being difficult. So I'll leave those to do the thing. Right, here we are. Now we should have some we've got some success. So we've got at least two common bees and a uh, forest bee. Like the previous time I actually got some, what did I get last time? Half, I think I got half a forest bee or something like that. Now where is my analyzer? There we go. My bee analyzer is here, so a little portable analyzer it's called these days. So let's see if this is a pure common. It is fantastic. And that's a pure common, so I can use that one. Now if this is mixed, which it is, I'm going to save this pure common because it's un the chances of getting a common drone are actually a lot higher than they are of getting a princess. So we'll put the princess safely away here, like that. And then we'll try again. We'll start again, basically. Because that's the first one we've got. I think this one had to... Uh, I think there's a, somewhere there should be a common trait. Uh, maybe I use that on this one here. So let's get the next bee out and get ready for this. So again, it's forest or meadows but which one are we going to use let's have a look in here i could of course use the ones i've already made but the point of this particular uh episode is to not do that now have i got a forest p i'm looking for a forest princess i've got a forest drone in here have i got any princesses around yes i have fortunately so i've got a pristine princess a meadows princess which will do for well actually we'll actually use the ignoble one i'll put this in here and we'll see how that gets on for next time. So now, if I get another, if I get a purebred common, then we're well on the way to actually having we've we've then succeeded in that particular crossbreed or mutation. So and now I'm standing on the wrong bit. <laughs> Just get off here. So what I'm going to do now is go over to the ocean monument. So I shall see you when I'm over there. Right, so, the, so that's a summary of the, what we've got. So we actually got a pure common princess, and this was a common forest. And I decided what I'd do then is to start again. And the reason I want to start again is because you get more drones than you do princesses. Well, you keep the same princess. So the chance of getting another um, pure, if I mix this with the, uh, one of these here, it's because this is a common forest, the likelihood I'm going to get a forest in the princess. And because you get more drones, there's a good chance that one of the drones is going to become a pure bred drone. So that's the goal. So let's have a look at this round of bee breeding. I think I've got my. I think I think my new. Yes, I need my portable analyzer out of the chest here. Let's have a look at this. So this was the princess. I've started off with the princess meadows. So same. I think this is probably going to be the same set as before. So we, ah, this, this one's a, a meadows common, which is very good for the first time. So let's put these two together, and we have a better chance of getting a meadows. It's just the way it works. Now that having said that, well, let's go and have a look at. I think there are flowers. So we'll, there's one just beside me here, so it should work anyway. Double check, yes. So it'll actually start. You'll see the yeah the bees coming out now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at another bee I bred, crossbred. By the actually this was the first a first time one. So let's get. I need to out of here some uh, apris suit for this particular bee because it's uh, extremely dangerous. And before I go, yes, 
I'll go over here and just actually I could do with a couple of blocks of dirt. Let me just take a second look at dirt. Doesn't really matter what I use. And I will show you why in a second. So we'll go across into the nether because it's actually another bee. So I need to go into the nether for another bee, of course. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my stuff on. Because if I don't, and you, you basically die. <laughs> as simple as that. So we'll come out of here and we'll go and visit this this bee. Now this is a sinister bee. And you see, it's fatal. There's some drops from uh, zombie pigment. And probably a few more around here. And you see, he's getting getting squidged. So <laughs> let's just put down some dirt and annoy them a bit, and they'll all come to us like that. So let's just annoy these two. Right, here they come. They can't attack me because I'm two blocks up. But, the, but you'll see that the bees are doing them no, no shortage of damage. How much health did he get? So he basically gets uh, two hearts per go. Right, and that's the, that's them all sorted out. Don't need to worry about them anymore. <laughs> and it will actually do the same to you as well. So you have to be very careful with these things. So let's go and have a look at them. So this was a mix between um, this particular bee in here. A sinister bee. It was actually a mix between. Um, oh, forgotten. Um, hold on a second. Let's have a look at this. Have a look at the recipe, and I'll tell you straight away. <laughs> a modest bee. That's what I was thinking of. A modest and a cultivated. So I used the modest princess and a cultivated drone, and they got to a sinister bee, a pure bird sinister bee, both a princess and a um, drone in, the, in one go. So that was very easy as it happens. In fact it actually tells you that the chance, let's look at the recipe again, it was 60% and you have to do it in another and I think I've also got the, um, the well I have definitely got the paper for doing it, I think that gives me a 90% chance of getting a bee. So these are coming along here and then they're getting put into here, the produce. As you can see I've got quite a few stacks of this simmering comb and the uses of this we don't really worry we need to pack it up but we can use it for centrifuge it and if we centrifuge it then we can get a pretty good chance of getting two phosphors and some refractory wax which is 100 percent now the, the uses of this is if we put this into a squeezer it squeezes out lava and that's 1.6 buckets and if we do it with sand here so that's two buckets so if we take two of these plus the sand in a squeezer will give us two buckets of lava pretty good huh so let's go and take some of this out of here because I don't need that let's go and test that out in fact what I'm going to do is I haven't got a squeezer for that moment. we'll just create a squeezer uh, hopefully I've got enough bronze in my collection oh and it's night time but we'll be all right I think Let's have a look how much bronze I've got in that. Oh, 22, ing 22 ingots, that's fine. So let's look for the squeezer. So we need to get a steady casing. And we need tin ingots. So we need 16 tin ingots. There we go, I think that's all I need for that. And we'll need a connector and a wire. And a, oh, yes, I picked up a sword, didn't I? I see that. <laughs> Let's go and shove that in here for the time being. I don't need it at the moment. And I picked up some of those. So let's go and t take the squeezer over to where the uh, smelter is. Oh, actually, I don't need it. I, I was going to make red sand, but I don't really need red sand. I just need some of this. And we just need to connect it up somewhere. So we could use one of these, I reckon. So we just need a, a connector and some wire. And I've got shit off those around about here. And you'll see I'm building another LV unit when I get a chance to do it. So that's insulated LV, which is fine. We need one of those and we need one LV connector. And this one, in this one here, I've got some Imperial Queens. I put the Imperial Queen in there. And that, that produces a reasonable amount of... Um, Royal jelly much faster in that way than it does from the from the combs uh, in the apris. So let's go and put this into here now. 
Oh, I was thinking about doing is putting this near to the smelter, but I could always move it again, can't I? So let's just put the let's just put it down. Let's get rid of these nuggets. I don't need the nuggets with me. Let's collect it up. And connect that up to the top of this one. So I need to actually centrifuge the comb first of all. That's no big deal. We've already done some of that. So let's right click that onto there. And now that's now got power, as we see. So let's go and get some, squeeze these combs out and get some phosphor. And we'll add that to the sand and we'll make some buckets of lava. So what I'm going to do is, actually I've already got some of this, but I'll put it in like that. And we'll, You'll see this will be squeezing up. We'll get some phosphor out of it almost immediately, I think. And some refracted wax as well. There you go. So we've got some phosphor in here. Let's take out ten. What do we need? Four, isn't it? Five pieces actually would be ten. I think the capacity of that is eight. So we'll just... Um, buckets. So it's one per bucket, isn't it? Well, I, I can tell you one thing. It's going to be a lot easier doing this than going off to the... Um, off finding lava in the wild as it were so that's what we need some sand Let's just put four of these and some phosphor and there you go we shall get two buckets of lava for each one of those and i think we've got a maximum of eight of oh, ten so there we are eight buckets of lava straight away how about that fantastic huh so next thing with the bees i think that's I said it's blue, that's strange, isn't it? It looks like it's water, but it's not water. It should be it should be orange for lava in this one, shouldn't it? So the next step in this is let's go and have a look at the sinister bee uh, and see what we can do with the sinister bee because it's actually quite a useful bee. Uh, I don't need to squeeze more sinister. Here we go. So the uses of this one is we can actually combine that with the cultivated bee and give us a fiendish 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 bee we can actually do it with a modest or a tropical bee as well so we can combine these two together and this one the output of the fiendish is we have a look at the generation what it produces it produces ash as well as a simmering cone and then the next level back from that one is the demonic i think is the demonic or the frugal and i don't think the frugal produces much useful stuff parch comb and the uses of that one is basically beeswax and honey in fact a good chance of both in fact so it's so relatively good part of comb that one but um, it's not actually got that much in terms of uses the, next, the better one's the demonic one what happened to that one i think i have to go back don't i yes but there's and there's a 25 percent chance of this one and the demonic one if you look at the uses of that one and the production of that one produces glowstone a 15 percent chance so you get a higher chance of um, simmering comb and you get glowstone. Uh, glowstone. So that's also good. Probably much better than doing it through grinding witches, so to speak. Now there's one more thing I'd like to show you um, before I go today, because it's only be a short episode. Because what I'm planning to do next is to do um, try and get some more immersive engineering machines ready and built up. Um, and I'd like to do the arc furnace, I think, because I've never done the arc furnace, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what I need. Now, over here, I think it's over here. Yes, it is. I know where it is. I was what I was doing is I was trundling around looking for bees, and then I came to I found some bees, and what I was what I was doing is looking in the swamplands for some bees. So here's got a nice little portal. Let's go through that. I decided to make my portal a little bit bigger so it fits this passageway exactly. And I came out here. <laughs> and somebody was somebody was shooting me last time I was here. I think by the looks of it, there's an arrow in that tree. <laughs> but I came across this a kimberlite sample, and right beside it, a tea light sample. So I've got lots of tea light samples and two kimberlite samples. We'll take those because you know there's a diamonds and diamonds in this pack are very difficult to find. In fact, let's take the whole lot of these because. Have a look at it. There's a lot of there's a lot of tea light here as well. That's three. What have we got now? Five. I think there's some more. It looks quite interesting colours as well. 
have a quick look around see if there's another one yes there's another one here I could put them out I could put the thing oh another one as well good so I said there was a lot and in fact indeed there is a lot so let's have a look at oh, how much we picked up eight so eight and two diamonds so oops a zombie pigman oh get rid of him don't need him around so let's um, have a look down here now down here I've got some ladders and at the bottom of the ladders I've got some water and I don't think the water is frozen no it isn't so we can jump down straight away one way to prevent the water freezing is by putting it under one block like this. It's a very good trick. <laughs> and then I came across all this tea light, and it's massive. And went round here and eventually found the, the kimberlite. And it's a large chunk of kimberlite, too. So there you are, Danny. You'll have to get very jealous about that one. So let's take up this kimberlite now with my um, silk, touch pick. silk touch pick. I'll see how many we get. This is a quite a rare find as it happens in this particular game I've had a few dud finds of diamonds with at least two I think where they haven't appeared where they've said they'd be supposed to be somewhere in the ceiling but I'll just check before I knock the ceiling out that there's nothing like lava above my head Right, that's it. Cleared out that lot. How much did we get? 33 diamond ore plus two diamonds. That's probably going to be a good stack and a bit of diamond, I'd say. So that's it for this episode. I would like to have shown you the Ocean Monument because I have cleared a lot of it out. But I'll save that until next time. So until then, bye for now.